Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson, you're watching Nature Nell. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. Hit that subscribe button. You may want to see what's coming up ahead like today's episode, which is my favorite. It's What's in Bloom, which I haven't done in probably about three, three weeks, I would say. I've been a little bit in hiatus because I've been cleaning the yard. I've been doing a lot of things. We had like, it rained leaves here like for several days. It was really, really, really windy. So I had to do a little bit of a cleanup. Plus I did a lot of like uh, rearranging in the greenhouse. I took out a lot of my plants and I actually put them in the ground. They're no longer in pots, plants that I've had for years, like begonias. So I'm gonna show all of that to you guys today. I don't wanna be too chatty in the beginning because it is going to be a lengthy video. So if you don't like orchids, if you don't like blooms, if you don't like exotic plants, if you don't like surprise blooms, move on to another channel because this is definitely not the one for you <laughs> this one's gonna be filled today with great great stuff and Simba <laughs> come here Simba come say hi to your fans <laughs> he never misses one I haven't done a video in a while and there he is come here buddy oh he's taking his time I'm not gonna wait for him so anyways guys without further ado let's go look at some blooms and then some All right, guys, it's actually the golden hour. This is what I call a golden hour is when the light just starts peaking from the west inwards. See, there it is. There's the sun. So it's about, um, there's where our sun sits at 6.30 in the afternoon. I know some of you guys were surprised because the other day it was 7 o'clock and it was about this sunny. Yeah, here in Miami during the spring and summer, it's pretty light all day. <laughs> <laughs> all day evening i meant to say you know it goes all the way through so i want to start let's see because there's so much to show you guys all right let's start where i always start here all right my and this is non-rehearsed i literally just got out of the car and ran here because i'm trying to beat the light <laughs> This is one of the ones I got at Crawl Smith that uh, Blanca and I both got it. I believe hers just started opening today or yesterday. Uh, Catlea Tigrina Leopoldii. Uh, I can't read. My contacts are so dry today. Sandbar Giant. By this time when I get home, because I've been straining my eyes and working all day, my contacts get really, really dry. And then it looks like I'm like coming on to people and winking at them and it's not that. <laughs> it's just that they're really dry so anyways this one I, let me see if it has fragrance mm, a hint of it I, I, it's just starting to open so i'm sure it doesn't have the uh full potency yet but anyways this was thanks to blanca when we were at Cross smith she's like come look at this one and they had uh just a little card of the photo of what it looked like and I was like, you know, I've seen that before and it's and it's not on my wish list, but it should be. And then she goes, I think I'm gonna get one. I said, if you don't get it, I'm gonna get it. Cause it almost looks like it has Walkeriana, see? For you guys that know the Cat Leia Walkeriana, it kind of has that look. So she was like, no, I'm taking it. So I took the other one. There was, I think there was only two left, maybe three. I don't think uh, Laz wanted to take one, but I really don't see why he didn't because it's a beautiful Cattleya. I'm really happy I have this in my in my collection. And then adjacent to that, we have a non-orchid. This is the pitcher plant that I got over at Crawl Smith as well at the show that I, if you guys have are just tuning in and you're new to my channel, go back about one or two videos no two videos because the last one i think was a haul and you'll see that um they had a whole area different different kinds of these pitcher plants now i've never had these these ground ones i have the nepenzies the ones that hang like the vine pitchers but this one <laughs> i put it outside because they told me oh put it out in the sun they love the sun i did what happens is it rains here in miami a lot so when it got wet, the pitchers got filled with water and the, the pitchers dropped. So what I did, I finally got them to sit straight up, but I put a, a, a string because it was just like, it was just so wobby. 
And so I, I spoke to Julian over at Carl Smith. I, I asked him if, you know, I sent him a, a text and I asked him what he thought. And he says, no, you didn't kill your plant. It's just that water got in it and now they get kind of wonky like that. You just have to kind of like stake them or just, you know, help them up a little bit. So I've been helping them up, but hey buddy, this is Patrick. He hardly ever comes here. He's just too much. <laughs> He's a very loving cat. He's very, yeah, I, I love you too, but sometimes you can be a little over loving. <laughs> right, boobies? Right, buddy? Yeah, he'll he'll be like, he even, he'll rub the air <laughs> just to get, just to get petted. But he's adorable. He's always in the front of the house. That's why you guys never see him. So then right next to it is this Brasavala nidosa crossed with a Cattleya shilleriana. And when I got her, it's also a crossmith. A lot of these you're gonna see because I, I just recently did a haul. And so they're now at their fullest bloom and then it gave me two more blooms. But check this out, this flower, you see it? Now look at this one. It's, <laughs> it's the same plant, but it's completely different. Like, what? <laughs> I even looked and I go, no, it's the same plant. <laughs> I thought it was a separate plant, but no, it's one plant, one big plant. But anyways, isn't that cool? It has, like, unless something grafted, I, I was thinking maybe one of them next to it got grafted. Could have happened. That could have happened. You know, like it just kind of like, I don't know. <sighs> maybe they had a lot of them together and then uh, one of them like this one just kind of crawled over to that basket. Could have been. Let me see. You know, see, it's a tiny little basket. It's only one. So I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what to say about this. If you guys have any ideas, you let me know because I am a bit puzzled. <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> And it's even a different size. Like, look at the size. You know, one, it's mammoth. Like, this one is like a big lip, and then there's a tiny lip. Look at that. <clears throat> Whatever. I like it. I love it. And and it smells amazing. It always has oh, such a nice citrusy fragrance. And then right next to it is one that always blooms for me. This one's a heavy bloomer, and I... It's a rustic, I'm gonna look for the name, something rustic, uh, Kelly Kellylea Rustic, BLC Rustic. I'm trying to read the tag by the way, but it's just so, it's just so bad. When I find it out, I'll, I'll show you. And this one also has a beautiful fragrance and it has such pretty colors. And you know how much I love cranberry and yellow and red, all those fiery colors. Somebody told me it's because because I'm an Aries and they said, oh, that's why. Because, you know, fire and that's your element. And then I was starting to look, don't be silly. And then I looked at my tattoo and I'm like, wait a minute. I have a phoenix in flames and it's a lot of fire. <laughs> so I'm like, and it's it's yellow and red. And I'm like, there must be something to this. So um, this one, again, this was my gift from my friend Laz, one of the orchideers. And this is my birthday gift. And it's called a Florida um, rainbow. And this is the actual cross. I'm going to be doing this because I, honestly, I can get the videos out for you guys a lot faster if I just show you the tags and all that editing. Because this way I could just, you know, put it through pretty quick. And honestly, I got to say, I'm really like, I don't even know how I'm finding the time to do these videos anymore because god bless my business is doing wonderful um i hired extra hands but um i gotta now re i don't want to change anything <laughs> i'm not complaining it sounds like i'm complaining right um but i do need to rearrange my my scheduling because that way i'll have to find another way of how to make my videos because the old way is not working for me right now so anyways um, that's why I'm doing. I'm like literally getting out of the car from work and just running to the back and recording something. So this one was the one that 
I try to remember the name. It's a little, it's a funky name, but I do have it. I have the, all the information. I'll put it, this one. I'm gonna have to put it below. Um, it's the one that Laz and Blanca uh, uh, got for me. They they were there earlier than I was at the show, and there was only three of these. And they said, "Oh no, the three orchideers need to have this. This this has to belong to all three because it's just too beautiful. It's an encyclia, but I, I don't remember what what the name is. Mm. You know, you get tempted to like." <laughs> stop the video look and then say but no, that would waste a lot of time and the sun's going down and this one also from Carl Smith now I got to show you guys I took this is on its way out um I got the mounts that uh the orchid store had sent me he had sent me a box full of of new uh cuttings and mounts and I am in love with these these that he sent are like chunks they were perfect perfect for these uh philanopsis and i got this at crawl smith at the show you know what i should just call this a crawl smith special no because once we go inside oh come on now hold on it's gonna be sloppy hold on there we go oh, it stays like that this is gonna have to go lower so anyway um I decided to put them on these little um, mounts that I got from the orchid supply store. This is also from, see, these are like the, the, the ones that are smaller. These are the ones that are, I think, believe called the Blanca mounts. But then he's got uh, custom made ones like these that um, I think it's under nature and mounts. And no two are the same. He creates them themselves. I really love them. I have to build it up some more, but I just have to find the right philanopsis. I may just continue doing the same one, which is Amboinensis, uh Teja's Giant. And um, I love it. I love that piece because I had it here, but this one is a gift from a viewer and friend. His name is Frank. And this is a um, Epidendrum ciliare. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm loving it. It's it's kind of these two leaves dried out, but it doesn't matter. Look how many new ones I'm getting. All this is new. All this is new. There's um, two new ones in there, two little new ones. So once I put it in this mount, it's like it's just it's giving me a lot of babies. No flowers, but a lot of new growth. So I'm super happy with that. Plus, I'm still doing my feeding cycle, as I as you guys know. And I've been doing a little concoction myself that I kind of learned at the show at crawl smith and i'm so happy that i did because oh by the way i'm sorry i'm sure you guys are gonna be like what is the name of that foul <laughs> that's it and it's really really pretty i love this foul because of the of the throat the little freckles on the throat hold on let me get a good it's kind of windy so it's a little hard but they're fragrant crawl smith has these and um they're they're very they're varied a lot of a lot of them are whiter a lot of them are have yellow a lot of them have hardly no red some look really white with just a couple of the pink freckles so you know it's when you see them online it may be it may look a little different when you get them because they are kind of different all across but you know what they're all beautiful i wanted to take one of each to tell you the truth <laughs> And then Tulumnias, believe it or not, they're still blooming. And then the spikes that they were blooming, see how they, how the flowers fall off. By the way, I, I use like the hanger wire. I cut them and I use them to hold the spike to make them, you know, look a little more unison. Um, but also it protects, look, I'll show you. It protects the, the shoot and I leave it until it dries because it may shoot more buds. So you don't want to lose the opportunity of seeing more buds. You want to see some, look, these here are complete new buds from old shoots. I mean, how gorgeous is that? If I would have cut the shoots after the flowers fell out, I would have lost this opportunity. And I would have missed another beautiful flower of what? Cranberry yellow with freckles. Bonus upon bonus upon bonus. Now, Speaking of bonus, in one of the mounts that Ken sent me that looked like a trophy, I had to put my Satan Fidania Matrata because it is just a showpiece. It is so beautiful. Look at this. 
and her fragrance is to die for. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys, there's so much in bloom that my greenhouse, well, I'm, I'm gonna show you an overall before I just keep showing, because I tend to do this. I only show you the flowers and I don't show you an overall. But lo let's focus on this because I'm having ADD moment and I don't want to bring you into my world because it's chaos. So here she is in her full glory. Last year, she gave me a lot of blooms and I gotta say this year, she did not disappoint. She came back with a vengeance because she was doing a little rocky there and I decided to put her on this mount. Thank you, Ken. You know what, Ken? You are saving my, my plants all the time because ever since I started mounting all my orchids, everything, I, start, I started testing with all my sick and, and not wanting to come back orchids, the ones that you keep trying and trying and nothing happens. And I noticed that they all, they all came here. I'll show you an example. I'm sorry I'm side noting, but I have to show you this because the other day I was looking, I go, oh, I got to share this with my viewers. This was a cat lay. It's a real, it, according to Laz, I forgot what it was. We got this at RF. It's a beautiful cat Leia, but it's never bloomed. So I almost lost hope, it dehydrated. So I said, you know what? Let's put it on one of these. Let's test and look at this, guys. So don't give up hope when you see them to the point of no return. There's always hope as long as there's healthy roots. From the roots, you can get new growth. I've seen paphiopetalums literally come back from just the root. <laughs> and a whole new plant comes out full of bloom. So don't give up on them that quickly. <clears throat> so anyway, back to the trophy. <laughs> So I decided to put her here because um, I noticed that her leaves were kind of like getting a little weird. And so what I did was, was separate the leaves, you see? Because they get very tangled. I separated the leaves from the roots and then I, I, I anchored the roots onto the board, which Ken so perfectly creates. And it's always great because look, I, I didn't do any adjustments. This is exactly how the board came. So. It, he does things, he's an orchid collector, so he knows what we need. You know, he do, you don't have to explain things to him. He, this guy knows exactly what an orchid person does and now they put their orchids up. So it's just so easy when he sends these things, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly where I would have put those four little holes. So um, I decided to do that and she, this year, she looks so beautiful and healthy and solid green. I mean, real, real beautiful. I'm so happy with her. So let me show you an overview of my greenhouse. So this is what I, I changed. All this, if you go to, back to my other videos, when you come into my green space, all this was full of plants. Those plants are all potted. <sighs> let me see, let me show you. Any, everything that's here, by the way, that you see here, see there's a golden hour. This is what I have to get on this side. <laughs> There we go. You'll see it better. Everything you see here is either in bloom or about to bloom as far as hanging uh, vandas. Um, everything from, from this one to, let me see, hold on. Where's the one? Look, these, the caterpillars. Now these were, something got to these and one of the, the areas over there, it kind of did not open. Not that one, but it's kind of like, I don't know. It looked kind of weird. So I think it got thrips, but nothing here has thrips. It was just that one leaf. And this is, uh, let me see, Falcatum, I think. Yes, oh man. That's exactly it, Bulbophyllum Falcatum. I haven't looked at this tag in a, quite a while. And they look like little caterpillars. See the sun, I'm gonna try to, there we go, this is a better shot. It's just starting to open. Yeah, Simba, I know. I'm trying to get this to focus, buddy. Huh? So there you go. Those are the, the little orchids. Now, it's just starting to open. When it's fully open, it looks way better. It has, it has this feel like it looks like a caterpillar. And I got this at Crawlsmith like three years ago at one of the fairs. Actually, no, I'm lying. I got that a year ago at, at Fairchild. I remember that. All right, so here we go. Let's start. <laughs> this is also Crawl Smith. You know, today's a Crawl Smith special. Here, I'll give you the tag. Like I said, it's easier this way than to. And this one, you guys, you know, 
you can see the Mimi Palmer in it. So you know that the fragrance that this has is, oh my God, it's like buttercream. And these are one of the ones that um, I got at Ophi's when, when I went crazy at Carl Smith. They had them hanging all these beautiful Vandas and I literally got six in less than I would say 15 seconds. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> They were they were all next to each other, and I was like, I have this and this and this and this and this. And I put them all away, and it was the easiest shopping I've ever done in orchids up to date. <laughs> and this was one of them. And of course, when this opened now again, I was like, when did I get this? I couldn't remember. And then I realized, oh, when I went on that crazy shopping spree at Carl Smith vendor vending booth. <laughs> They weren't even there. I got there really early in the morning because I wanted to start filming early and their stuff was hanging there. And since Chris lets, you know, I have access to go in there before they open, I can film and talk to Chris and get things together. And when Hayden Matt come, uh, got there, I go, oh, I already got everything separated. It's on the corner and I put them all to, they were laughing so hard. I'm like, I took care of it early this morning. <laughs> so this was one of the, the orchids and I mean, look at the colors, guys. Tell me if this doesn't look Avatar. To me, when I saw it, the first thing I said, it's like, ah, this is like watching Avatar, but in real life. And the fact that it has that beautiful fragrance, is just, it's a blessing. Then next to it, we have the Encyclia, is it Alada or Ulada? <laughs> which I believe my viewer again from Honduras, he says it's, it's, it's native to his country. And you are right, sir. I smelled it the other day. My God, do they have the most amazing, delicious cookie sweet fragrance, uh, sweet fragrance. It was like smelling, a, I don't know, vanilla-y. Now they don't have it because it's late in the day. It's, it's like around 10, 11 o'clock, they start releasing the fragrance. Let me see, I wanna get a good good shot of this because the sun, when it's this harsh on it, there we go. You lose, you know, the, the whole detail on the highlights. So anyway, he told me that, you know, this is native to his country. And I can't imagine just walking around in the woods, like here going into, into the Everglades and just seeing this hanging wild over tree canopies. Like, that would be great. <laughs> like the Florida Timpenzies, you know? I have one there, but it hasn't bloomed for me yet. The Encyclia Cordigera, which is another collector's favorite. And they smell really, really good. This has such a great fragrance. Uh, yesterday morning when we were cleaning here, the whole space smelled so floral and so sweet. Between these two, you know, it's just delicious. So the Cordigera <laughs> always reminds me of like a man with buck teeth or something. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that the bottom, the bottom part is the beard. Oh my God. See what I mean, guys? This is like what he does the entire time. <sighs> I wasn't kidding. So then we have Mimi. Buddy, I'm going to step on you. We have, <laughs> we have the Mimi Palmer, which... It's, it's the, the queen of fragrant orchids who is used in so many different crosses. Like the one we just saw that looked like the avatar flower. This is the regal, majestic, and always smelling delicious Vanda Mimi Palmer. And I got her at Banyang. And I don't have her tag, but she doesn't need introduction because the fragrance will give it away. I'm hearing weird noises in the back, guys, and I'm hoping it's not my cats trying to get my attention because they, they're known for doing funny things <laughs> to get my attention. All right. <laughs> and then this one just... Cut. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys remember this. This I got this. This is a Mimi Palmer again, crossed with uh, Tessalata, and it always gave me that. The fragrance, look at this. It has another one, which... In the past, I think if you look at my past What's in Bloom, I think every What's in Bloom, she's in it. <laughs> and she's giving, I was about to put her back and I noticed another spike. And then my Vanda Marie, I think that's what it's called. Marie. Yeah, Vanda Marie. Let me look for that. Here we go. 
focus. Well, you guys can see it. Mary I or Mary, Mary A, whatever. This is a, a this is one that continues blooming over and over and over. I don't even bother putting her back anymore in Vandalane because in Vandalane, you know, that's where they go to to regain their spikes. There's something magical about that area that as soon as I put them there, I will have two to three spiking. It's amazing. And look, whatever I put there will spike within a week or two, actually. So anyways, these right here, I love the fact that they're red in the front and then they're like a crap. Well, the sun's, forget it, you can't see it. Well, you can kind of see it there. They're yellow in the back. <laughs> So of course, you know, cranberry and yellow. And then look how cute. The little cakey decided he wanted to grow up <laughs> and give me a second spike. So it's gonna be double spike. This is double spike season. I'm getting a lot of double spikes this season, which I'm happy. Now this is the Tavavot, which I was about, see right there, that, um, that one just bloomed for me and it smells like a uh, fruit punch but i was going to put it back in as well i noticed oh another spike next to it is the vanda muang thong i'm not gonna try come on let's focus. let me see if i can do it with one hand there we go Muang thong mr sawat there we go. i forgot this mr sawat part <laughs> funny i remember the muang thong but i forgot the mr sawat so um that one i got at rf's and if you guys ever want to go to rf that is their information if you're here in homestead check them out they are awesome and they have a new um a whole new shipment of like amazing stuff i saw it in one of blanca's videos I'm staying away because I'm waiting for the Tamami show, really. To tell you the truth, I spent a lot of money in the past few weeks on orchids, and I have to chill it a little bit. So, hey, that's going to be a new shirt. Chill it a little bit. All right, there we go. That's pretty. So, these I love because of the white petals. <clears throat> so white, and then it has that little yellow... Lewis calls them manatees. He says they look like little manatees folding over. That's the, 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 that's the tail. You know how manatees sometimes swim and fold over like that? And I say, yeah. So anyways, <clears throat> what I wanted to say about this flower is it's been blooming for about a month and a half, almost two months now. I can't believe this thing just blooms for so long. For me, I was, I'm shocked. I love her so much. She's like one of my favorite now. <laughs> I say that a lot. And then here is another one, Double Bloom. And I think this is one of the ones that I got. No, this is from Lady Vanda. This is um, the Bangkok Sunset. Escacenda Villa's pink. And then still growing strong is the my gift from Frank Smith from Crawl, uh, Crawl Smith Nurseries in Apopka. Um, this is like right now my trophy of all trophies. I've been wanting this ad in my, uh, my wish list. And I can never say the name Halueta. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> but I'll put a little, a little photo of what it looks like. I can't wait for this to bloom. All right. Now here was a surprise. I bought this Vanda about, well, the last Crawl Smith show. Not this one that I went, the one before, which was six months ago. I think it was in November. And I got this from, which was damp being cold and rainy, but you know what? I had such a good time <clears throat> because the people really make it a good time. And you know, it's a great place when it's damp being cold and rainy and you're wet and you're still having a good time. And uh, Spring Waters, Tang was selling this Cattleya. Uh, I, think for, I think I paid like 120 and it was massive, but look, it already came blooming, but it just shot two new buds and she is so fragrant. She's still opening, so she's not really at her fullest of beauty. But here you can kind of see. There we go. That's better. It's going to be upside down, I know. <laughs> but, but at least you can kind of get an idea. And I was so surprised. I, I, I looked at it. I go, wait a minute. Are those two buds? And sure enough, she gave me two flowers. I love this cat, Leia. And it's gotten so big since i gotten her. And I put her on that on that cork mount which made it even more majestic 
I love it. It kind of, I don't know why, it reminds me of the continent of Africa, like the shape. I love it. Let me see, what else, what else? Oh, look, standoff. They, well, I shouldn't say they, Simba does not accept Patrick, but Patrick wants to caress Simba because he's just marmalade all over. And so they get into fights and then only when they're eating, they're buddies. But other than that, ugh, I'm always trying to separate them. And this, I've gone this far. They couldn't even get this close to each other. Um, this is my gift, my wonderful gift from Blanca. Blanca's Orchid Garden. <laughs> and here's a tag because it deserves a proper um, tag. Elsie Fire Dance, Blan we're calling it Blanky. <laughs> I said, see, it has your name. You have to, you have to get one. <laughs> but um, it's actually Blance. I think that's how you say it, Blance. When I think of that, I think of the Golden Girls, but wasn't that Blanche? What a great show that was, my God. The writers of that, genius. Um, this stuff, this stuff. <laughs> I think I'm talking about hair product. Back to plants, back to orchids, and go. So this orchid gave me an extra bundle of flowers. It was only this and that little cluster in the back. And then look at that. She's not a fragrant um, orchid, but I love, love the color on this. Um, I've been getting a lot of these um, avatar orchids where they have a glow to them. I don't know if you see what I'm seeing. It almost looks like they're lit. So I've been gravitating a lot towards these. Yeah, buddy, I know. All right, let me see what else. Oh, I know. By the way, I planted my joy, fairy joy. Let me see. Joy, fairy tale joy. Van, um, Philonopsis, joy, fairy tale joy. Such a quirky name. So anyway, she came in a little basket from San Santini Nursery. And from the, um, I think I showed this to you guys before. If you've seen this before. I put her on this little container and she really likes it. You know, some people go, you know, I don't like to move my orchids and replant them when they're blooming. And I get it because I didn't do that at all when, when I was starting. But as you get more comfortable and then you start learning your orchids and your, your environment and everything, you know, that, that your orchids need, you almost built like almost, I call it a, a, a mental network with the with the plants where you kind of go by some by a gut feeling and i gotta tell you when you trust that gut feeling it, it works it really does and you know you just you can't be just going crazy and mixing things and putting things but you know just study your plants i i hang out here in my green in my greenhouse for hours you know i have a great partner because i gotta tell you i spend almost every day i come back here <laughs> And I spent a lot of time back here. <laughs> he knows how I feel about my plants. He never ever says anything or intervenes with that. He knows this is my my world. He's my world, but you know, my plants are my world too. That's why I have them both at the ranch. <laughs> so anyways, look at this encyclia. Look how amazing that encyclia is. I can't wait for this to open. And I can't wait to share it with you guys because last year she gave me something similar to this and it was a party and she was on this side and they last forever. Like this encyclias, encyclias um, I've, they've been open for a while now. I think for at least, um, this is the second what's in bloom that they're open. So the grammatophyllum, this is not a grammatophyllum, this is a grammatosymbidium. Let me see. Ah, uh, Nathan Newman. There we go. I don't know what the M E R R is. Is that like um another another cross? I don't know. I'm still learning, guys. You know, I've been doing this for how long now? I've been collecting orchids for oh, oh, more than five years, like eight, nine years. I got really into it about five years ago, and. <laughs> I, I'm still learning so many new things. That I'm, I look through books and I go, oh my God, there's no way, never. I don't think even the, 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 
highest rated uh, certified botanists <laughs> know everything because there's new things coming up every day. Sometimes I read of new discoveries of new orchids that they discover in Ecuador. And I'm like, I'm amazed every day they're discovering new flowers and new plants and new animals. And you know, nature is ever, ever changing and ever evolving. That's why we have to get with the program or <laughs> we're gonna be left behind. Look at that, how gorgeous. They look like little pigeons. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you see the little pigeons inside? <laughs> You know, that's that's what I love about nature. You, It has an interpretation of its own, but yet it mimics other things organic in nature. So it's, it's just awesome. Then, my Schimberkia's here. Now this is the Louise Fuch, oh, hold on here. This is Louise Fuch, I got this at Planteo La Orquidia. And murmur, hold on. Because I heard it today, so I have it fresh in my mind. Murmur. <laughs> Forget it. Shamberkia. I'm making shirts. I still call it Shamberkia. I have to find out, you know, how to do that. Because I have been out of the graphic designing uh, industry for quite some time now. For over 11 years. So I have to call some of my colleagues and see from back in the day. <laughs> what's the best way to do it so anyways look at this this is like the fourth spike this uh Shimberka gives me she is so 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 generous and i feel so bad because every time she oops ran out of battery guys guess what i just started filming again following day in the morning <laughs> because by the time i got a charge it was too late and the light had gone down so to be continued in this beautiful sunny morning. So even the lighting is different. And I'm trying to work around the sprinklers because as you can see, all my sprinklers are on now. <laughs> this is what it looks like out here. And it goes by sections. Like it already finished off there. So now it's going towards the back. So anyways, this is my um, Luis Fuchs. I got this at Planteo Lorquidia. And again, I got to thank my buddies, the Orchiteers, Blanca and Laz for convincing me to take this. I had seen it already, but it, was, it wasn't one of those things I was really on board to buying, but man, it, was it a great purchase. I don't want to make this video too long. I was looking at what I recorded yesterday and I'm already at 40 minutes. <laughs> but I said it was going to be a little lengthy. So anyways, let me see. Let's go back here. I want to show you. I know you guys had asked me about my Hoyas. Here we go. Here are the Hoyas. They're all doing wonderful. Everything is blooming beautifully. I am feeding a lot. Um, I'm feeding my Hoyas every week. Look at my Retusa, how massive it is. If you guys go to uh, my previous videos, you'll see how much smaller it is. When people tell you that Hoyas are to be ignored and left in a corner, I don't know who came up with that idea because I did that and my Hoyas were like really, really slow growing. And when I started doing exactly what I do with my orchids, I gotta tell you, it's like a complete difference. Like this one just finished blooming. This one had so many peduncles blooming. And here, I'll give you a brief tutorial. <laughs> Not tutorial, I'll give you a brief example of what I use. So I use 20, 20, 20, this is everything I use on my weekly okay look, there's something missing what's missing there's something oh here it is my bloom booster All right these are the four things i've been using every week on monday to a gallon i do half a teaspoon of 20 20 20 half a teaspoon it even says it there light feed half a teaspoon per gallon and heavy feed one teaspoon so i'm doing it every week it's half a teaspoon per gallon and then this is potash, which I want my leaves and my cakeys to get a lot of strength. So when you have cakeys or babies that are rooting, I've heard this is really good. I ordered this on Amazon and it, you use literally a quarter of a teaspoon. This is half a teaspoon. Here, I'll show you. That's half a teaspoon. Well, a quarter of that. It's very powerful. And then I add a half a teaspoon of, 
I'm sorry, um, a quarter of a teaspoon of, of the Epsom salt to get my leaves really green. And I put that all together, all in, 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 in the same batch. And I spray everything except my pitcher plants. I never fertilize them, but everything else here gets fertilized. Remember this? I brought it inside. It likes it here better, my Rick and Stylus cone. So yeah, guys, and then these things here, these plants, I just potted them. I told you I was taking things out of the ground that weren't doing too well, my black velvet, poor thing. They just don't do well in the ground. By the way, for your, those of you who know, this is the surprise uh, pot that was sent to me from the orchid supply store, and it's spiking. Does anyone know what that is? <laughs> I still don't know. I'm so excited, and it's got a lot of spikes. Like, it's everywhere, like they're poking through. So I have a feeling it's gonna be something like um, bundles of flour, I don't know. All right, I wanna show you so much. Look, my uh, string of hearts, I just wanna record this right now. I had just cut this in half and look, it's almost touching the ground. Once it touches the ground, I cut it in half and I put it up there again and making it thicker and thicker. So if you guys have strings, that is the best way to get them. Hey buddy, he's always around. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go show you guys. Oh, by the way, this is what I've been planting. Let me show you real quick. This is my begonia here. I put it here because they seem to like the denser, humid areas. So I put her here. I put this angel wing begonia here in this, in this dual, <laughs> I call them the dual trees. I put them here. So what I'm trying to create is like, look at this. Lewis bought all these at Santini. They're all spathoglottis ground orchids, different colors. So we're gonna, I'm gonna plant these. I'm just trying to see um, how many I need to fill. I'm gonna do that spot too. So when you swing in between, you're swinging between spathoglottis. That's gonna look really pretty. Oh, I've almost forgot to show you my Maxillaria tenifolia. She is full of blooms and man, does she smell good. If you guys like coconut smelling orchids, this is the one. It just has such an amazing fragrance and they're very quirky looking, the flowers, especially when the camera focuses, you can really see it. <laughs> it doesn't want to focus. Oh my God, this camera, come on. Yeah, it, 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 it loves to focus on the background but the foreground, foreground, it's just like, it's, it's non-existent. <laughs> so anyways, here is a better view of it. They're so pretty. And then right next to it, I had the Yamato, which is a yellow one, which to me, it smells like vanilla cookies. Look how cute that is. They smell so good. Oh my God. It's like, I wanna, I wanna literally eat it. <laughs> It's like a really sugary vanilla wafer. That's what it smells like. All right. Oh, and here's some more begonias. So, you know, all in all, I want it to, you're gonna get wet. Simba's like crazy. He walks right into the sprinklers. I've never seen a cat like that. Um, this is what I'm, I'm trying to achieve. You see how it clusters? Everything starts clustering nicely and coming together. And it's like its own little environment. You have begonias. Philodendrons, monsteras going up. I love this monstera. I got it so small and it's just taken off. My Violetta. So you see, it's it's like a little environment. Once it all grows in, it looks really pretty. And I mean, the yard is kind of leafy right now. Like I said, it rain leaves. <laughs> My land, landscapers will be here Friday though. And see, this is another one. Now what I do is, once they finish the landscaping, I take all the bricks, I lift them up and put them back down. So I cover everything that's going over the lip and it becomes really clean and finished. Like, well, sort of like that. But once they do the grass, see this one's pretty good. Once they do the grass and clean the leaves, I go back and I clean the edges and it just looks beautiful. All right, guys, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take you guys all the way over there. Uh, I'm gonna shut the camera off and show you what's in bloom on my arecas. All right, guys, I'm bringing you here to my arecas because this season I have a lot in bloom on this section. And I think it's because I started uh, 
fertilizing them with a time release. Um, I will share that in a couple of minutes, but let me show you what's in bloom here. Look at this, how gorgeous. This is Dendrobium. I don't remember the name of these. I don't know why it's hard for me to remember what I have on my records. It's probably because I don't see um, blooms here often, but look how gorgeous that is. That little fuzzy tongue. I think they call it tongue or lip. I can't remember. Anyways, it is adorable. And I started with this about five years ago. I bought these at the Redland. I'm a little bit out of breath because I've been walking <laughs> in this heat. Um, in the Redland Orchid Show, which is in the Fruit and Spice Park here in Redland, Florida or Homestead, Florida. And I remember this is one of the very first um, orchids I got that was aside from a Phalaenopsis and Laz was starting to get me into more of the exotics and he says oh just get these and they were selling like three little stands for like ten dollars so five years later look at that it's giving me all those cakeys and babies I also got this one this dendrobium check this out Again, I don't have it tagged. I will look for the name. I have it, I have it written somewhere. I just have to look for it. And these are fragrant. Mm -hmm. They're slightly fragrant. And this was another one I took a chance on to see if they do well. And I gotta tell you, I used to think they were dying, but no, they turn into these like dry looking sticks, but it keeps shooting new growth. Now this, is what I was explaining to you guys that has been the culprit of giving me great blooms this year. These little cups, you can buy these at Ophi's, Ophi's Orchid Supply. And inside, let me see where the, once it's locked, it's locked. Hold on, no, I can't do this with one hand, here we go. See, I have the time release in there and I will put the time release number underneath. And that too, you could also purchase at Ophi's. I gotta tell you when they have it, you should definitely get it because they do go fast. And this is how I place it on my, on my orchid. I try not to get it to, to be touching anything, you see? And so when the rainwater hits it, it disperses all the, the nutrition in, onto the roots. So try to keep it a little off of the of the base. You don't want it touching. That way you don't get any root burn from the fertilizer. But I tell you, this year, it's magic. <laughs> Even my fowls are like looking great. And down here, this is Lewis's. This was his other purchase years ago. He decided to get something for himself and he loves the smell of coconut. So the Maxillaria tenifolia we planted it here and it seems to love it it took a while for it to actually take and we thought it wasn't going to do it but about a year after it started really growing now these are the same dendrobiums you just saw the pink and white with the fuzzies <laughs> and these are extras these are cakeys that i cut from that one and put here and so lewis is, lewis loves to do this he puts these bands and so it forces the see the stem to grow on another on another uh my god what is wrong with me this morning <laughs> i'm usually not this tongue-tied it forces the orchid to grow on another branch <laughs> look at all the new babies she is so happy here but again i truly believe it's this this stuff is magic guys you should really consider if you want your orchids to bloom and and look luscious like this <laughs> by the way this smells just on sitium oh my god the fragrance on this is so so strong and so delicious and i got this years ago about five five six years ago and it was a tiny little piece like this and look at this baby now it's becoming a beautiful specimen and the, the, the fragrance here is just outrageous. Like it goes, look how long these, these spikes are. 
So this is my little jungle here, where I keep all my, here, let's go this way. Let me show you guys this side. I don't want this video to become too long because it's more of a what's in bloom, which is always long. These are still blooming, all these fowls. I've shown you guys these fowls before. That one back there was a gift from Laz on my birthday five years ago. I told him it's a gift that keeps on giving because that orchid is always, <laughs> it's always in bloom, just like this one. This one is always in bloom. And just when you think it's about to kick out all of the flowers, another spike comes out. So all these I have the fertilizer. All right. My God, it's so humid today. All right, here are Lewis's that I also, let's see if the sun's hitting in the wrong direction. Hold on. I gotta tell you, the sun could be challenging sometimes when you're videotaping. <laughs> So here are the white fowls where Lewis is creating this little uh, fowl haven and it's proving to be very successful. See, I, I've been placing these on his as well. So he can, um, he can have some beautiful, hey Simba, how you doing buddy? I know, I was trying to hide from you so I could videotape. Uh-huh, but you caught me. What are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? It's food time. You want to eat your food? I know he's hungry. <laughs> I've been busy doing so many other things. Anyways, guys, let me wrap this up here. You're all white. By the way, we have like four or five more of these to hang up on these arecas. Oop, almost ran into a spider. You know, when you live in a ranch, you learn to coexist with spiders. <laughs> I've been walking around sometimes and I can feel them crawling on me and I'm like, oh boy. But I'm not afraid of spiders. I think they're awesome. All right, guys, let me close this section here. All right, I almost forgot this beauty here, which was a surprise Schomburgia. I got this at Santony a while ago, Santony Nursery. And if you guys have not seen or heard of it, I have a couple of videos back. I actually covered them and a lot of you viewers went over there and every single one of you that visited got back to me and told me how amazing the experience was so if you haven't been there i encourage you to go let them know you saw it on my channel and victoria will treat you like gold she is an amazing person so i got to shamburkia i had no idea what color it was or the size or shape it only had a, a shoot and so I took a chance on it. I think I paid 65 for this, which if you look at the size, <laughs> she's really big. Um, I think it's a great price. And now that I see the flower, oh my God, it's like I won the lottery. Look at that, how gorgeous. I love those ruffles. And you know, when you see them in red, it's not very often. They're usually pink or purple or fuchsia. But when you have this blood red, oh my God. I hope somebody hybridizes this red with yellow. It will look beautiful. So I almost forgot her because she just started blooming and, um, and it was a total surprise. I'm glad I was able to capture her for you. And I don't hang them on my trees permanently. I hook them so that way I can move them around because honestly, I like to smell the flowers. And if they're too high up, can't smell them so I keep them low see there's my other one I keep them low where I can smell them all right guys I really think this is it <laughs> I've given you almost everything <laughs> that's in bloom um I've left a couple of things that well you know what let me just show you what the hell one hour show here we go <laughs> oh my brassias are blooming and I'm so happy because they were not doing good at all. I just learned that they are very finicky with the lighting. And so this seems to be the magic spot where it gets a little bit of sun, but not direct. And lo and behold, my other one shot a spike. This one is a red one. And look, she's shooting a second one. She almost died on me, by the way. So guys, don't ever give up on your orchids or plants because you know, 
they sometimes go a little wacky, but you can bring them back. All right, now for reels, for reels, we're done. <laughs> See you on the flip side. All right, folks, that is it. That is the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the length of this episode. It was just so many beautiful things uh, to show. I didn't really want to skip on any flowers. So that's why I kept on going back. Plus, I've been having a Mercury in retrograde day <laughs> since yesterday. It probably is in retrograde. But um, it's been windy. I'm sorry if my voice, like when it gets windy like this, my voice doesn't get captured. I am going to get a mic for that. Um, I've noticed it in other recordings that they, it sounds like a lot of static. So um, I'm redoing this one because the, the, uh, when I was closing this morning, I heard it back and it sounded awful. It, I couldn't even hear myself. So, and I know you guys have complained that you can't hear it. So I get it. I'm going to try to fix that. So I am doing this one with this new monopod. Let me see if this works a little better. Um, I will be at the Time Amy Show the 13th and I will also be at Ophi's this Sunday. I don't know what day that is, but I will be there at Ophi's Orchid Supply in the Redlands, Florida for their Orchid Festival. It's usually a lot of fun. And one of the vendors actually is staying over my place who is the Orchid Dev, Joshua. And I always say Josh Groban because I don't know, I like that singer. <laughs> Joshua Jones. And he has a great IG. Check it out, the Orchid Dead. And he creates by hand these beautiful, beautiful pots. You got to really check them out. Um, and if you're in Miami and you can go and support the mom and pops, that's the best place to do it because you get really nice stuff. So anyways, guys, I won't continue making this more chatty because it's already pretty long. Um, my hands are getting tired look, <laughs> from holding this. So anyways, I will see you guys hopefully in the shows. If you're there, stop and say hi. Thank you for all the comments, by the way. I finally got to all of them. I couldn't respond to all of them. But there was so much this time, I guess, because between the show and the hall, a lot of you got very excited and you got me excited reading everything. So I do read everybody's thing. I don't miss one. But because uh, the way it works is if, if you if you miss one, it won't go into, I guess, a folder. It goes into, into our little analytics. So we won't miss it until we read it and we like it. And then it goes into, you know, where everything else is filed. So thank you everybody for leaving great comments from all over the world. I love to hear where you're from. It's so awesome to see that my love and passion for orchids is reaching out to so many people who are like-minded and I'm hoping that what's successful for me may help you in growing your orchids and maybe in, in inspiring you to get even more exotic ones. I'm, uh, that's what inspired me once I learned it was the sky's the limit. So I hope your sky becomes a limit and, uh, and you have a great journey with your orchids. So until then, I'm Nelson. You're watching Nature Now. And remember to always, always keep it green.